so I saw Spiral a couple days ago when it released. I've seen a lot of people upload their reactions and reviews online, so I thought, hey, I'd do the same. I haven't seen anyone's reviews yet, though, so I wouldn't get incepted and give my full honest opinion on the film. So, what I think of the film? Well, uh, the film Spiral from the Book of Saw is the latest movie in the Saw series. Not as a main entry, though, rather as a spin-off. Where have I seen that before? Murders across the city start happening, done so using Jigsaw's old M.O. Could John Kramer still be alive? Or is it another Jigsaw copycat? Okay, wait, where have I seen that before, though? The police scramble against the clock to uncover who's behind this, only to find out that one of their own was behind it the whole time. Okay, I know I've seen that before. I think? Jigsaw. Saw 4. In all seriousness, though, even though I'm comparing it to Jigsaw, and will continue to do so throughout this review, it couldn't be more different. It's vastly different. So Alex, what'd you think of the film Spiral from the Book of Saw? Oh, that's right. That's yeah, just me today. Now, I can't help but compare this to Jigsaw, as they're both spinoffs. But the way they're approached is very similar, yet different. For instance, both have a high budget. These two films, I feel, have the biggest budget out of the entire series. And it's funny, because they're the two spinoffs. But the way the budget is used in both is different. For instance, in Jigsaw, everything feels glossy. Everything has a modern feel to it. It's it's sleek in design. Whereas Spiral, it 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 has that high budget, no doubt, but it doesn't have that glossy feel. It actually feels more grounded than most most of the Saw films. I don't know what it is. Well, I think I do, but I'll go into that later. An instance of this having a high budget is it opens up with a carnival sequence, and we've never seen that in a Saw film. It remind it's like a it's like the carnival from Us. It's I I was <laughs> am I watching the right movie? It's instantly from the get go. It, it spiral is different than all the other Saw films, but it still has the high budget. And comparing it to Jigsaw, I'm like. I think I prefer the approach of Spiral in terms of the way the budget is used. And another way you can tell that this film just had a high budget was the the people involved with the film. And the one who essentially is the face of this entry of the series is Chris Rock. And now I've read somewhere, and I didn't read the full thing, but I believe the story goes that Chris Rock was the one who approached them with the idea for this film. This is essentially his film. I don't know how much he was involved. I don't know how involved he was in terms of the story making. But the overall aesthetic of this film, the approach of it, and the way the way it all came together was very much because of him. This film wouldn't exist because without Chris Rock. And... Chris Rock is not the only big big name in this film. Samuel L. Jackson is in this. <laughs> and it's funny, during the film, before the film started, there were a bunch of, obviously, trailers playing before. And every trailer seemed to have Samuel L. Jackson in it. And one of my friends was like, damn, how many movies is this guy in? And seeing just Samuel L. Jackson in a Saw movie? Saw films are at least... Saw has a reputation for being like a low budget horror series, particularly probably because of the first. But yeah, I was like, yeah, it. He's in this, and another star actor that I recognized, uh, Mari Soul. I'm forgetting her last name, but she's in a couple things here and there. And I was like, hey, you're in this too. This is, and we have seen big no big name actors before. Actors that I can point out, like, hey, that's Donnie Wahlberg and. Saw 2, I believe, and 3, and 4, <laughs> and Danny Glover uh, in the first Saw film, which I always forget he's in that film, but this is the first 
truly star-studded cast, which I hope gets, I hope that gets this movie more eyes, and it opens up for other well-known actors to be like, hey, I want to be in the Saw series, and that leads me to one of the things that I was worried about the film, going into it, based completely only on the trailers, uh, was the performance of Chris Rock, because Chris Rock, as everyone knows, he's, he's a comedian, and <laughs> growing up, as I'm sure most people my age did, uh, I knew him as Marty from Madagascar, and every time I heard him open his mouth in the trailer, I was like, oh god, that's all I can see, it's a freaking zebra, I'm gonna be distracted throughout the film, it's, it's actors like, you know, The Rock, when you see The Rock in any film, you don't see the character he's playing, you see The Rock, and same with like, I don't know, Jason Statham and Vin Diesel, I don't know why I'm pointing out the crew from The Fast and the Furious, but that's, I, I just see them. <laughs> That wasn't the case with this film. I was actually... Chris Rock's performance in the film did not take me out of the movie. And that's actually... His performance is the biggest positive I can give this film. He gives it his all. You can tell that he is passionate about this. He is going in on this. He he He's not holding back. And wow, I didn't know he had it in him. Chris Rock was great in this film unfortunately i was taken out of the film every time samuel L. jackson was on screen because i'm like well i'm just seeing samuel L. jackson i'm oh hey it's samuel L. jackson strung up on a trap oh and by the way i don't know if i forgot to mention this spoilers spoilers for the whole thing that probably should have said that in the beginning also seeing the chick mari soul i forgetting her last name seeing her on screen also was like oh you're not that character, Angie. You're just this actress I know. I, am so, I was so stunned that Chris Rock was actually... He actually managed to pull this off. His performance. Amazing. Does this feel like a Saw film? And that's something I was asking myself after having seen it. Both yes and no. This film has such a distinct taste. It has a different aesthetic from all all of the prior Saw films. The, Chris Rock, you can tell, had an influence in this in terms of the, for lack of a better term, vibes of this film. Uh, one of the things I heard uh, was that from the get-go, they wanted to create more of a, uh, kind of how the first film is very uh, more mystery-oriented. That's what they wanted to do with this. Uh, more, It's more thriller I wouldn't say this is a straight up horror. This is more thriller. Uh, there's a lot of it's police procedural mystery heavy. That's actually one thing that I uh, need to mention is that the traps in this film felt like an aftermath. It it felt like they made the movie and realized, oh, that's right, this is a saw film. There's a reason why people are coming to see this. One, obviously, for the mystery and the who done it, but. We need some traps in here, and some of these traps feel half-baked, but there are two that I really like, and there are, those two are, I would say, pretty good. They're, they could be contenders for maybe being, I don't know if it's too early to say, but the best of the series. Not that they're the best of the series, but they could be, like, top 10, top 10 traps, maybe. So these could be maybe possible contenders, but all the other ones, and there aren't many, there's a... I counted at least five, and I know what you're thinking. Hey, some Saw movies only have, like, five, or some even have less. I think the first Saw film, obviously it's the first Saw film. It only has, like, I think that only has, like, three, and that's not even, that's not including the room that Adam and Gordon are in. In, so, in the Saw films that have less traps, it doesn't feel like we're lacking in traps. In this one, it felt like it lacked in that department. I guess... Since I'm on the topic of the traps, I'll briefly, I'll briefly uh, rank them really quickly. So I came to the conclusion of five saw traps, and keep in mind this is from what I remember having seen. So if I'm missing one, that's whoops. <laughs> I guess it just wasn't that memorable. But out of the five, starting from the lowest ranked, I guess uh, would be the wax, the hot wax poured over. Uh, Muddy Soul's character, um, Angie, 
uh, the hot wax poured over her face, essentially suffocating her. Um, even the way she had escaped, she had to sever her spinal cord. It was... What was that? <laughs> I wasn't a fan of that one. Up above that one, which I think is a much better trap, is the one where the one of the officers... That's actually one thing I forgot to mention. Um, a distinction between uh, the movie Jigsaw and this spiral is that the motivations behind both, they're, they feel kind of similar, but they're done differently. In this, all of the victims are dirty cops, essentially. That's the whole MO. It's cleaning up the Justice Department. The, I don't know, the, the, yeah, that. <laughs> Jigsaw, uh, Jigsaw, I don't remember what the MO of Jigsaw was. I know that the whole point was to get, uh, what was the guy's name? Halloran? Is that the guy's name? The detective? Uh, in the laser thing? Because he was a crooked cop. Which is how I make the connection between that to Spiral. But there were other people that he had in the traps. Like the bucket head. And I know it was made to mimic Jigsaw's original quote unquote game. Like what 10 years prior to the present day events of Jigsaw. But I don't think they show why he got those victims other than to replicate the game. I f it could be a just random people that have done wrong. That have wronged him. Who, what was his name? Logan? That's actually... <laughs> I remember Logan's name from Jigsaw. I do not remember the name of the Jigsaw killer in this film. And I could have looked it up. I could have looked up the cast name and the list of characters, but... I... I'm just too lazy. <laughs> it just... It didn't leave an impression. And you know whose name I do remember, though? Uh, Chris Rock's... Uh, character, his name is Zeke, short for Ezekiel, I remember that, because, hey, uh, the performance was amazing, I don't remember anyone else's name, uh, Samuel L. Jackson's character, who knows, Zeke's father, where was I going with this again, oh yeah, Raking the Traps, so yeah, fourth ranked, tr fourth uh, best trap would be the officer who is strung up and the glass is being shot at him. It is gnarly, I will say. It, this this trap and all the ones I'm going to mention are above the wax. Hot wax being put on your face trap. Because that was just whack. Um, <laughs> whack, wax. Stupid. Um, but I really like that glass one. Because it, hey, it seems like something the real Jigsaw would do. Sick bastard. Um... Uh, in third place, I would put Samuel L. Jackson in his trap. I don't, I didn't know what to call it, so I just put Samuel L. Jackson in his trap. The one where he's strung up, only because, one, it's, and I, I know what you're saying, it, that's, that trap was, had Samuel L. Jackson had no way to escape on his own, unlike the one with Angie, where she had to sever her spinal cord and do something to escape. It was dependent on Chris Rock's character, and Samuel L. Jackson was just, strung up bleeding to death that's not anything one it's samuel l jackson in a saw trap that's amazing <laughs> seeing him strung up pretty sick two i do like the way it kind of mirrored the marionette in the movie the pig marionette maybe on the nose a bit but i really like that Yes, the whole the way you solve the trap is you just need really one bullet and shoot that one thing and he's dropped down, saved I guess. But I really enjoyed it when the I don't know what what are they the FBI the SWAT team when they burst in and they cut some wire which has him go up again and his arm pulls out a little what looks like a gun and points it at them and that makes them all shoot him just. <laughs> Just seeing that, I don't know if it's seeing Samuel Jackson. That's pretty dark, actually. I don't know why I'm saying that. But that was amazing. Just seeing Samuel Jackson just raise his arm completely out of control of what's about to happen to him. And he just gets mowed down. That was amazing. I liked that. And I... The ending, I will get into in a bit. But that, I was like, that's amazing. 
Uh, second trap is the tongue trap. The intro. It's simple. It isn't like you got to do this crazy thing to do this. And it's straightforward. Pull your tongue out. You live. But it's your tongue and it looked painful. Now when when they first showed the shot of him kind of dangling him standing on that little stool or whatever and having this contraption on his mouth I at first thought I thought it was going to roll his tongue up like a roller and it would eventually he had to yank his tongue out in time before it rolled all the way before it rolled his tongue all the way and it eventually grabbed onto his lips and began rolling his lips along with it and then just removing his lower jaw that's what I was expecting it's still a cool trap, and I think I ranked it lower only because I had that expectation immediate. I had that image immediately in my mind. I was like, oh, that's dark. And then it was just him removing his tongue, which just him removing his tongue, it's still... Uh, <laughs> and him having to do it before the, before the, you know, the train came and took him away. As the jigsaw said in the tape, before this is your last stop... <laughs> I thought it was pretty sick. But my number one trap, and I I think it might be most people's. I don't know what other people think about the traps in this film. But I would say my favorite one is definitely the one where the guy is like in this pool or tub of water. And he has this contraption over his head where he needs to bite down on a thing. And that thing will essentially pull all of his fingers off and that will set him free. That was the most, it, it wasn't the most painful, but it was definitely, I'd say, the most creative and the most jigsaw-like. It, seeing that, I was like, oh, I'm, it feels like I'm watching a Saw film, finally. Which, you know, it, it, it not feeling like a Saw movie isn't bad, but this, I was like, oh, I feel comfortable. No, that's, I shouldn't say it like that. That's, <laughs> it felt like whatever's. And speaking of, uh how different this movie feels. Uh, they really want to hammer home that this is a spin-off and that this is a departure from the film. And I I don't know what people thought about Jigsaw, which is the movie prior. I know that it was, you know, obviously a spin-off. I feel that people complained that that movie wasn't different enough. It felt too much like the Saw films that came before it. You know, using Billy the Puppet, which I don't mind. You know, use the guy, whatever. But you know, having Jigsaw's voice. If it's a different, if it's a different Jigsaw killer, why is it still using his voice? It, it's everything's done with him. And I think the thing that definitely added the nail in that coffin was Tobin Bell's appearance in the film, where we're made to believe what he's still alive. I I don't know if it's true, but I I feel that people complained that that film played it too safe. And it wasn't its own thing. It didn't own up to being a true spinoff. And that's where I feel they took note of that and was like, alrighty, Spiral, you're your own thing. Which, it, I, it, it felt, it looked, it was its own thing. But I want to say maybe it just had too much of a departure. And I know people might complain. I don't know yet, but I feel like people might complain this feels too different from those original Saw films, which I would lead to people to, which would eventually lead people to be like, well, you complained that it was too similar, and now you're complaining that it's too different. What do you want from us? So I'm not going to make that complaint, because I, because I'm not. <laughs> One of the many reasons why it feels different is everything, all the pieces of iconography that Jigsaw is known for and Jigsaw's associated with, uh, such as Billy the Puppet and his iconic voice, they're they're not present in this film. Uh, instead, the new puppet is uh, it's a marionette instead of uh, what Billy the Puppet was a ventriloquist doll dummy. I think it's a dummy. I think that's what they're called. This is a marionette. All right, cool, different type of puppet, and it's a pig. But I think it's like a pig dressed up like an officer because get it uh pigs in the police department <laughs> the killer has a new voice 
And I will admit, I actually like the voice. Although, hearing it, at some points, it was kind of hard to understand what was being said. And I don't know if it's... Maybe it's just me. I I don't know what hard of hearing. But there were certain points where I was like, oh, I, I didn't understand what was said. But I... Do like the voice. Hello, Detective Boswick. I want to play a game. The three train is arriving in two minutes. It is up to you to decide if this will be your final stop. It does feel weird not having Tobin Bell, because Tobin Bell is essentially the face of the franchise, or Billy the Puppet. I don't know who really is the face of this franchise, because Billy the Puppet. I, okay, I guess Billy the Puppet would be it. Him not being in the film. And he didn't even have to make an appearance, a physical appearance, but I wish that at some point they would have gotten the the new tapes with the new voice and then have been like, hey, let's compare it to the original Jigsaw Killer. Because at some point, you know, like, you gotta compare them, right? So then they play the tape and you hear, you know, Jigsaw's voice like, the hello, Dr. Gordon, or whatever, and I would have been like, oh, old friend, there you are. <laughs> but... I like that they didn't. I like that they had restraint, which most films these days don't have in terms of in terms of bringing back old franchises. And there's a couple I can point out, but I won't. One thing that I do like that they kept was the hello zep at the end. That they they, they kept it, and I when they read because at the end of every soft film right you gotta have a twist you gotta have this mind blowing what the fuck moment and always accompanied by that by that moment is the hello zep you know the dun 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 it's you know they go hand in hand and i really loved it every time i hear that film every time i hear that soundtrack i'm always like oh shit big things are about to go down and when the whole like twist reveal and the whole ending climax of the film happened and you're gonna hear it it's it's coming in it's coming in and then you know it starts just dropping i was like damn it's pretty sick to hear that in a theater all around you that was amazing like that they kept hell is that speaking of soundtrack they the soundtrack the new soundtrack for the film made by 21 savage i listened to it the whole thing and i gotta admit it's pretty sick. It's it goes hard, <laughs> and I oh, it, it played during the credits. But yeah, it did play over the credits, and I remember hearing it. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, damn, that's pretty sick. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like the and I know um, Chris Rock. I think Chris Rock. I saw on um, I don't know if it was an Instagram live or whatever the hell it was on his Instagram. He showed in I don't know if it was an interview with him with 21 Savage, he was mentioning how he wanted, he wanted the, the right person to remake, uh, I guess remix the whole Hello Zap, uh, Saw soundtrack, Saw soundtrack, and that his daughters were like, oh, well, there's, look at this, you gotta check out this music, and that they began working in in cahoots, I guess, so, Chris Rock is, I feel, so Chris Rock is responsible for bringing that in as well. Chris Rock's responsible for a lot of this film, and it's all the good things, actually, and he's, everything that he's responsible for bringing to the table in this film, they're all the good aspects. Everything else, though, that I feel he had no control over just bogged this film down. And one of the things which is the biggest negative for this film, for me at least, is how predictable it was. Everything that happened in the film, I began calling it. And <laughs> I was sitting next to my friend in the theater and I kept telling him, like, watch him be the watch him be the, the killer. Watch him be the new Jigsaw, who, spoilers, it's the it's Chris Rock's rookie partner. I didn't know what the MO would be. Obviously, well, hey, obviously it's killing and getting rid of the dirty cops and, you know, cleaning up the system. That, obviously, that, that was made evident. But I didn't know why he was doing that. But everything else, I, I, I knew it was him. And 
my friend was like, I, I don't think it's him. And I'm like, no, it's, it's him for sure. <laughs> and then, uh, at the beginning, I was like, I don't know if it was the beginning at the end. And then I also called out, uh, watch it be revealed that Samuel Jackson, his character was the dirtiest cop in the city. And that's why he's being saved until the end. And lo and behold, that was true as well. And that's. That and the fact that the new Jigsaw, he isn't, I don't know, I don't know what word I'd use, charismatic. Not saying that the past Jigsaws have been, I mean, definitely, definitely, Tobin Bell's, John Kramer. John Kramer is as charismatic as you can get in terms of Jigsaw. He's like the gold standard, right? And then you trickle down to Amanda and Hoffman, and then, I don't know, Dr. Gordon and Logan. And then this guy, this guy... I think, if not for Dr. Gordon, who, his reveal as Jigsaw sucks, <laughs> I think this guy might be the worst Jigsaw. And I'm not, I'm not taking into consideration the whole voice thing, you know, that voice is cool, but I mean the reveal and his MO and everything, his performance, his performance as the rookie cop was, was pretty good, yeah, I was solid. I liked him as the rookie cop, but the moment, you know, he started, oh, it's me, the new Jigsaw, it, uh, I don't know, I don't know if I wanted him to ham up his performance, it just felt like the writer just handed him the script and said, read these lines, and he just read it, he didn't feel, he didn't feel cold and calculating, the way obviously, John, obviously, John Kramer was, or even, even Amanda Hoffman they felt cold when they were revealed as Jigsaw. You could tell Amanda, before she's revealed as Jigsaw, you know, she's, oh, she's just a player in the game, both first, both in the first film and the second film. And then once she's revealed, you know, she's, oh, she's this completely different person now. And same with Hoffman. Hoffman's like, oh, I'm just another officer in the workforce. But after his turn, and some people would say, oh, Hoffman's not a great character. I like Hoffman. But you can feel that there's a sort of calculating coldness to him dr gordon doesn't have that <laughs> although he does the actor i always forget the name of the freaking actor who plays him carrie elwis is that what it is i'm i'm probably butchering that i'm sorry but he he hams up the whole movie you could tell he knew that the film was gonna suck anyway so i guess i give him a pass not really no i don't give that movie a pass jigsaw even jigsaw i'll mm, even somewhat in Jigsaw, Logan, there was like a sort of turn in his character for the better, though, where, oh, I like him as Jigsaw. Not as like not like the others, I obviously prefer everyone else who came before him, but, you know, there was a sort of coldness in him that I was intrigued by. With this, with the rookie cop and his turn, I, there wasn't anything for me there. The reason why I was able to point out it was him who was Jigsaw the whole time, and I don't know if it was because I overanalyzed the film, which is one thing that I actually liked. Most films, when I go to watch films in theaters, I just go for the movie-going experience, and I just sit down and play the movie, and I'm enjoying it, I guess, and I, I, I enjoy it, I guess. This film, I was actually like analyzing stuff and actually like working my brain i guess so it was pretty sick i don't think i've ever tried putting things together and actively processing stuff while the movie was playing and yeah it was in in the theater most times it's like most times it's just me shitting my brain off as the film plays but not for this and i actually like that um i wish they did a better job with the mystery because one thing that i've picked up on and and I think it's like in every Saw film is when someone's in a trap, the editing goes nuts. <laughs> the way they edit, the way that the trap is set up, it's like multiple chaotic shots. They, they like induce anxiety in the close-ups of the person trapped in the shot, in the, in the trap and close-ups of it's, it's sporadic. They implied the, they wanted the audience to think that the rookie had died at a certain scene where they show him strung up and he's been skinned. But they only show, like, the way the editing is done 
is they show the skinned body and they show certain segments of his body getting skinned, like his arm. But they didn't show him, they didn't show his face. And most of the times when it's edited, they sh- they do like a straight close up of the person screaming their head off. Sometimes they, <laughs> I remember in, in some films, they even like close up into their eye. They even like zoom into the guy's or, or girl's eye and it's chaotic and they didn't show his face at all. And I was like, oh, oh, it's him then. It's just straight up him. The, the editing gave it away. <laughs> so, yeah. Editing can make or break a movie, apparently, which, I mean, I always knew that was true, but I witnessed it firsthand, and I was like, oh, damn, your mystery broken because of that. You failed. You done goofed. Every, so everything I had predicted had come true, except for one thing, and it was one thing I was hoping that they would do, and they just didn't do it. Everything else that I'd hoped that they wouldn't do ended up happening like oh man i hope it's not the rookie cop i know it's him but i hope they don't do that obvious twist oh they did it i hope they don't do that oh they did it i hope they do this they didn't do it and it was the i i really wanted so badly for there to be a cult of jigsaws a cult of jiggies so the whole mo is cleaning up the system and there's a point where he extends his hand out to chris rock and he's like join me and there's a scene where chris rock he it looks like he contemplates joining him, like literally, and it's something I've never seen before, and it's something I would like to see. It's never been a twist reveal. There's been two jigsaws, kind of like in Scream. You know how there's two ghost faces. I would have loved for there to be two jigsaws. You know, it's one here, one here, and it's it's the reason why there's two is because there's a cult and it's growing, and I it spins out of both part seven and part eight. Because there's still three, at the end of this film, at the end of Spiral, there's still three jigsaws out there. Dr. Gordon in the part seven, Logan at the end of part eight, they're both still free. And this guy, even though the building's surrounded by like, what, the SWAT team? He still, you know, quote unquote, escapes. And I guess you could say four, if you want to include Hoffman. We don't see him, we, listen, we don't see him die, and knowing these Saw films, if you don't see someone die, then your best bet is that they're still alive. So I'll put four. There's maybe four Jigsaw still around. And at the end of, and there's maybe even more, because at the end of part seven, it's revealed that there's multiple people donning the pig masks. And I was hoping at some point in the film, towards the end, that the guy would have, that the new Jigsaw would reveal Listen, Chris Rock, Zeke, you can't stop this. Join me. That's the only way. You can stop me, but I am but one piece of the puzzle. (laughs) I am but but one jigsaw piece of the puzzle. I, because at the end, and this ties into part eight, Jigsaw, the other, the other spinoff, the prior spinoff where Logan says, I speak for the dead. I'm here to give justice to those who didn't get it that's essentially what this that's that's technically what the mo of this film is you know getting rid of the dirty cops as well i wish that at some point the rookie i don't know jigsaw would have said the jigsaw from this film spiral would have said i am but one of many this is happening all across the nation that numerous cities their police departments the judicial system even numerous systems have been infiltrated by other jigsaws a new brand of justice is going to arise and it's like this cult of vigilantes and i and this this could have this would have been amazing this would have i feel helped the film a lot you can then have a quick montage or not you could just have that line but if i were say in charge i would you could do a quick montage of quick snippets of different cities. You could be like New York, LA, Detroit, Chicago, Miami. And it's different jigsaws, different pig masks, different puppets, different people in different traps, all going in out all going on at once, all across the nation. And him being like, just join me. It's join me or join me. Like there's no other option. <laughs> And, and I, that would have been so amazing. 
Because then you could establish, because one thing that I I read somewhere was that Spiral is just the beginning of an anthology take on the Saw franchise. So then when you set up that there's other similar events occurring across different cities, that's the perfect recipe for an anthology series. Then you could have the next entry in the series, well, this is the other city that's being inflicted by a jigsaw killer this is oh the next film is this other town where there's a jigsaw killer in the judicial system oh here's another one and you could keep doing who done it while keeping this connectivity within the series i feel like that would have been pretty sick that could have been amazing world building and it's like yeah we can do as many of these as we want and of course there's gonna of course they're gonna be done in you know, varying degrees of quality, but we have a recipe for doing, I don't know, unlimited Saw movies now. There's a bunch of them, and they're all inspired by John Kramer. And that, that that's that's what this guy, and that's essentially what Logan, and that's what their MO is. It wasn't done, unfortunately, and I was, I was disappointed greatly, but that was just, that's me. That's my own fault. Those are all my thoughts on the film. Spiral from the Book of Saw. You might be like, well, you just rambled on. Is it a good film? Is it a bad film? If, okay. And I talked to Alex prior to doing this. And he asked me a couple questions, which I felt were good questions. One of the questions he asked was, would you recommend this movie? Uh, as a casual viewer, probably not. If you're a, if you're a Saw fan... If you love the series, I would say watch it. It it isn't it isn't great. It doesn't even feel like a good Saw movie because of the lack of traps and everything else. The mystery is it wasn't even an engaging mystery, and I solved it like halfway through. You know, I don't want this movie to do badly either, because I'm sure depending on how well this movie does. That 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 shows the studio, hey, we want more Saw movies. And uh, you best best bet your bottom dollar that I want more Saw movies. Otherwise, if you want a good horror movie, I would say no. This isn't a horror film. It's a thriller police procedural. I don't know what else you'd call it. It's a thriller mystery, half-baked mystery, first and foremost. Saw film afterwards. But that's my opinion on it. Um... The reason why Alex wasn't on today is because he didn't see the film. And I told him, if you like Saw movies, watch it. If you don't, don't. And he said, alrighty, I won't. And I don't blame him. That tongue scene, though, uh, was released online. uh, Officially by Lionsgate, I believe. So you can go look at that. And I, so I sent it to him. And he looked at it and he was like, yep, the traps are still as gruesome. (laughs) So yeah, that's Spiral. I wanted this review to be short, and looking at the runtime, it's it's anything but. I mean, these episodes are anything but short. I'm planning on doing a ranking, uh, an episode where I rank all the entries in the franchise, in the Saw series, uh, both the movies, and maybe even as a bonus in that same video, ranking the Jigsaw Killers, maybe. But yeah, I'll be, I'll probably, I don't know when it'll come out, but all nine movies ranked from worst to best, and we will get to our regularly scheduled programming. What's the next movie? Dracula? We I can't believe we still haven't done the episode Dracula. It's been a couple months coming, <laughs> and I still haven't finished that damn book. It's a pretty good book, but anyways, that was Spiral. Um... Yeah, what are your thoughts on it? If you've seen it, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment down below. If you're watching us on Spotify, or rather, if you're listening to this on Spotify, or iHeartRadio, or any other place where you listen to podcasts, you can't exactly give them, you can't exactly give them likes or anything, so, I don't know. So you can follow us, though, on Spotify, I know that much, so go click that follow button. And yeah, that's everything for today. I'm your co-host, Robert. This has been a spiral from the Book of Saw review. And I'll catch y'all over on The Witching Hour.